I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Do you believe that about yourself? You know, sometimes we get so involved in running around in our everyday life, I know I do, that I forget this magnificent spirit inside me. So I found this, this story about a farmer who had rescued a baby eagle. And he brought it home, and he figured he'd just put it in the barnyard with the chickens and let it grow with the chickens. And so the eagle lived like a chicken. He did what chickens do. He slept in the chicken coop. He pecked the grain on the ground like the chickens. But months went by, and the eagle became full grown, and it was still acting like a chicken. So the farmer thought, well, maybe I'll bring someone in that knows a little bit more than me, and he called a naturalist in. And the farmer said, you know, he's been living with the chickens. He thinks he's a chicken. He doesn't know he's an eagle. And the naturalist looked at this beautiful bird and said, you know, there's so much more than a chicken here. You know, this is, it doesn't know. It has this magnificent spirit in it. So it picked it up, and it took it over, and it put it on the post of the barnyard fence. And it went, fly, you belong in the sky. And the eagle just kind of hopped around on top of the pole a little bit, and he looked down at the chickens where he was comfortable and jumped back down and started feeding with the chickens again. So the naturalist went, you know, you were born for something greater. So he thought, well, maybe if I put the eagle a little higher... So he picked it up, and he got on a little ladder, and he put it on the roof of the chicken coop. And the eagle hopped around up there for a little bit and then looked down at the ground where the chickens were, where he was comfortable. He jumped back down, started feeding with the chickens. And the natural said, you know, he was born an eagle. His heart is the heart of an eagle. Maybe if I take him away from the barnyard, away from what he's used to. So he took him and drove to a nearby mountain. He went up the mountain to where there was a big ledge. And he sat the eagle down on the ledge and he said, you belong in the sky, fly. And the eagle just kind of moved around looking for grain on the ground. So the naturalist picked the big eagle up and held it up to the sun and said, fly, stretch your wings and soar. You belong in the sky. And he felt something stir inside the eagle. The eagle ruffled its feathers. It stretched its body. And then slowly at first, but then very surely and powerfully, it spread its magnificent wings and flew. Today's talk is a divine within, or you can fly. It's the second talk in the series I'm doing on Unity's Five Basic Principles. And we're going to review the first one because it was a couple weeks ago. Kim, would you put the first one up, please? The first principle, there is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life God, the good, omnipotent. Say that with me, please. There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And now let's look at the second one, this week's lesson. Kim? Our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. Now, let's say that together and really... Bring in what you're saying. Bring it inside you. Our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. You see, even though the eagle was raised as a chicken, even though he led the life of a chicken, his spirit was that of an eagle. How often do you see yourself as the chicken? Less than what God created you to be. 
unaware of the magnificent spirit that's within you. In Genesis 1.27, Scripture reads, God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. We are spiritual beings created in God's image. God is infinite consciousness. God is infinite consciousness. It's that feeling you have here in meditation when we all come together in that consciousness. And each of you, each of you are a unique expression of that consciousness. In unity, we call that our Christ self. But when someone asks you who you are, how do you identify yourself? By your physical appearance? By your relationship to others? Your husband, your wife, your husband, wife, son, daughter, daughter of? By your job title, what you do in the world? By your actions, by your life history? These are only our human roles. And they have little to do with our divine self, with our true self, with that eagle spirit inside us. Because deeper, underneath the roles, underneath the titles, underneath the personality, underneath the ego, at the core of our being is what we truly are. And it's something so much greater than that everyday self. Carl Jung said, the world will ask you who you are, and if you do not know, the world will tell you. One of the biggest confusions we have on our spiritual journey is between our ego self and our divine true self. Get confused, don't we? Our ability to find the meaning and purpose on this life's journey hinges on how well we know our divine self. Not knowing we're born an ego, we use our roles, our limited chicken beliefs, what the world tells us to satisfy our needs, to help us make ourselves feel better, create our self-esteem. And when they don't, when these roles don't do that, or when they stop working for us, we experience a sense of loss and emptiness. Those of you that were here when the Space Center started laying off, it was a shift for many. You had your role, you knew who you were, and all of a sudden, you couldn't identify with that anymore. That sense of loss, that sense of emptiness. As long as the eagle believed it was a chicken, it couldn't fly. As long as I believe I am my ego, I can't fly. I can't be free. So we talk about ego all the time, don't we? What is ego? We're not born with an ego. You ever look at a little baby? There's no ego there, is there? We acquire it through conditioning and associations. Just as that eagle was conditioned by his association with the chickens. The easy way to put it is ego is my everyday self. It's who you become when you walk out those doors, right? Ego is what we think we are. And we are never what we think we are. Of course, it never occurs to us that we are not what we think we are. <laughs> so where did the word ego come from? It actually came from Germany in 1780. And it came from the German word ICH, which meant the I or self of a person, labels, mass, and judgments. So it's out here, isn't it? It's a part of us that becomes entangled 
hear that word, entangled with everyday life. You feel like that happens to you? You get all tangled up? It's a part of us that attaches to the physical world, to our physical self. It's a part of us that believes we're limited to our intellect and our five senses. It's a part of us that believes our body, our mind, our intellect, our wealth, our family, our friends, our job should provide us the happiness we seek, the fulfillment we seek. It's a part of us that keeps us separate from God. And in that place, how do we feel? We feel fragile. We feel insecure. And so we create defense mechanisms. And what does that do? It distances even further from God, from our divine self, from the real happiness, the real truth that we seek. So we've talked about ego, what ego is. What's our divine self? What's our true self? Who were you before your ego came along and said, hey, I'm you? Our true self is conscious awareness. It's before the thinking starts. It's before perception happens. It's before relationship with space and time. It's where we find the truth we can always depend on and the knowing of all the answers we seek. And to John 2, Jesus said, listen to this. Feel it. Take it in. We call Jesus our master teacher in unity. There is a truth that lives within us that will be with us forever. And you feel that resonate in you? Jesus taught that the divine is not just knowable, but that we are it. The Father and I are one. We do not create our divine self. We don't earn it. We don't work for it. It's within us all the time. There's no exceptions to that. It's always there. Your true self, listen, your true self is what makes you you and no one else. Can you feel that? We affirm that true self every time we sing that meditation song. What do we sing? I am the heart. I am the hands. I am the voice of spirit on earth. If we allow that energy we call God to move through us, we become the heart, hands, and voice of spirit. And the song goes on and says, And who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world. When I get out of the entanglement of my everyday life, when I can remember that evil heart inside of me, when I can allow it to flow, I can walk through my everyday life as the heart, hands, and voice of spirit. I know you've all experienced this at one time or another. Maybe in nature, in the woods, at the beach. A time when you were so aware of the sounds, the smells, the colors, but you weren't perceiving them as happening to you. You were in them. You were part of them. Have you ever had that? Has anyone ever had that happen? Yeah. 
and see the knots. And in that moment, did you notice what happened? That all of a sudden you seemed to be infilled and that you weren't big enough, that you expanded, that infilling went beyond your body. And your spirit soared. Your spirit flew. Those are the moments of being and experiencing your true self, your divine self. That's always in there. So, how do we tell the difference between the true self and the ego? That's the big one, isn't it? So we know sugar's sweet because it tastes sweet, right? We can tell what it is by the quality of its taste. So our true self has certain qualities that belong to it the way sweetness belongs to sugar. And as we come to recognize them and cultivate them, and the best way is through meditation, then our true self becomes more dominant in our lives. It becomes more a natural part of us. So we're going to go through some of those qualities. Kim, do you have the first one, please? Our true self is certain and clear about things. It lives in the field of possibilities, creativity, power. Where the ego, on the other hand, is a slave to the physical world. It reacts to outside influences. Recognize that one? Got it? And if a situation goes well, you're what? Happy. And if it doesn't go so well, what happens? Upset, sad, anxious. Yeah. Can you see the difference in the qualities right there? So when you're walking around and you're not so happy, what's operating? The ego. The next one, Kim. The true self is stable. Our true self, our divine self is stable. It doesn't cling. It doesn't grasp. It's detached. It's non-addictive. Where the ego self shifts constantly. The emotions are like a seesaw. They attach. They become addictive easily. We don't do that, do we? That's a big one, isn't it? That seesaw emotions. That's the best way to watch if my ego's operating. Third one, Kim. Our true self is driven by a deep sense of truth. And if I'm all caught up in the drama in my head, I can't feel that truth. The ego is driven by demands of I, me, or mine. So if you want to know if you're an ego or your true self, notice the words you're using. Am I using I, me, mine? Am I attaching? Am I grasping? Am I grabbing? The fourth one, Kim. Our true self is is at peace. Yeah, I see some of you closing your eyes to that. Close your eyes and just breathe that in. Our true self is at peace. Doesn't that feel good? Open your eyes. But our ego, it's easily agitated and disturbed, isn't it? It doesn't take much to set it off. And the last one, our true self is love, not human love, God love, great love, 
unconditional love. Our ego lacks love. And so it seeks it from outside sources. Our true self is love. Do you have the recap of those, Kim? Because I see people taking notes. So our true self is certain and clear. Let's read them together. Our true self is certain and clear. Two, stable. Three, driven by truth. Four, at peace. Five, is love. I was sitting in my office, and you know you've had this happen, and all of a sudden my eyes caught a book on my shelf that I hadn't picked up in a long time. And it's called The Healing Letters of Myrtle Fillmore. Myrtle Fillmore is the co-founder of Unity, and I was just sharing before the service with someone. The Unity began because of a healing Myrtle Fillmore experienced. She had been told since she was a child that she was unhealthy, that she had inherited a disease passed on by the family, which was tuberculosis. And when she was 40 years old, she was given six months to live. But she went to a lecture, and she heard these words, you do not inherit illness. And you know how sometimes you hear something at the right time, and it resonates with you? She went home, and for the next two years, for two hours a day, she would go into her room, her room. She would put a chair down, an empty chair for Jesus, and she would sit there, and she would talk to her body. And she would praise her body and thank her body, every cell, every organ, two hours every day for two years. Myrtle Fillmore lived another 40-some years. She healed herself of tuberculosis. And after her healing, her neighbors started coming to her, praying in her living room. They started having healings. And then a group of people would sit and start doing distant healings. And then they started teaching the people that wanted. And before you know it, they would have these little classes. Sunday afternoons, after people went to their regular churches, Unity was never intended to be a church. But because it grew so big and so large, it was called more a movement than a church. But here we are today because of this woman. And I want to read you her words. This is the book I'm going to be teaching from in June. God gives freely. It is for us to keep the receiving channels open so that our intellect does not take us out among the limited ideas of the world. Do you hear the power of that? It sums the whole talk up in one little paragraph. It is for us to keep the receiving channels open. As soon as I'm entangled and my ego, I close my channels. I close that ability to feel that eagle heart inside me. We are divine beings with extraordinary abilities. Own that for yourself. Our spiritual work is about awakening to the divine within us. And all that is required, this is a most important thing I'm going to say this morning. All that is required is letting go of who you think you are. So this week, if you find yourself feeding with the chickens, you know, those negative, limited thoughts or people, stop. Stop yourself. Take a moment. Try to get someplace where you can be quiet. If you're outside, look up. Take a breath. And open your heart to that magnificent eagle spirit inside of you 
and fly. God bless you.